Uh, hey, here with Leader Charizard, we're going to talk about the turnpike debt here and the report that our department's issuing today, but I know the leader wants to say a couple words. Oh, no, I just, I just think that the, the general's work um, in making sure that we're responsible in terms of our um, debt, um, I, I think he's headed in the, the right direction. Um, we, we honestly think that the Act 44 debt is unsustainable and um, that any comprehensive transportation funding has to address that Act 44 debt. Um, and uh, I'm honored to stand here with the Auditor General, and we appreciate that he took the time to testify but before our Transportation Committee hearing um, today. Yeah, I want to commend the Leader for his focus um, on, the, on not just the transportation issue, but making sure that we don't lose sight of the debt issue on the turnpike. And you know, what I pointed out in my testimony today in our hearing is that if we don't do something about this by the year 2021, it'll cost $50 for the average working Pennsylvanian or just even whether, or to drive, travel across our state. That is unsustainable. There is no way that we can ask the average Pennsylvanian to pay that. And we also know that that will only push more traffic onto our smaller side roads, which only cause more wear and tear on roads that are not equipped to deal with it. You know, we can go into the whole history of how Act 44 came and the whole tolling of Interstate 80 that didn't happen, but we now have uh, an issue that we have to fix. And I'm pleased that the leader uh, reached out to me to testify today on the debt issue. Um, our report is now, um, it's going to be live at, uh, online uh, today. Um, hopefully you have copies of it. But again, I appreciate his leadership on this and making sure that we don't lose sight of this issue as we move forward with a transportation plan. The other thing, you know, as, as you know, right now we're about $3.9 billion in debt at the Turnpike uh, based on Act 44. But also we're continuing to borrow on an annual basis $450 million annually moving forward. Um, we need to replace that debt so that we don't continue to accumulate that debt. I, I, I agree with the Auditor General. We are where we are and we just have to make sure that we address it in a responsible fashion. And I think any uh, comprehensive transportation proposal has to address that Act 44 debt. And, and the leader points out he's 100% right about the 450 million. Every year that we put off fixing that adds more to the yeah. debt. Uh, and so that, that and that's a that's a hard number. Hey, I'm going to open it to questions. Um, please feel free. Talk about phasing out Act 44. Do you want a phase down over several years? Do you want to cut it off at once? And what's your best plan for replacement funds? I, I, I will tell you that I think the OCFT uh, lifting off that cap, the first, at least for roads and bridges, the first $200 million should go to replace that $200 million of borrowing annually, at a, at a minimum for the roads and bridges. Um, making sure that we can sustain mass transit represents different issues, but I think we do have to come up with a replacement revenue at some point for that. Uh, but I think beginning immediately, stop the 200 million in annual borrowing uh, for roads and bridges and use the OCFT. Keep in mind the OCFT cannot be used for mass transit. That's why it's more suitable for eliminating the 200 million in borrowing going forward on, on roads and bridges. So you could at least reduce the a hard borrowing down from 450 million to 250 million to today, really. And let me let me add to what what the leader said. And you have obviously two parts of this. One is the debt. The other is the replacement revenue for That's right. whether it be public transportation or the roads and bridges. The only thing I want to stress here is the longer that decision gets point off put off the worse the debt situation becomes. He's I think right. a lot of us recognize that that's not going to happen tomorrow. I mean, so it's not just going to immediately end tomorrow, but the longer it gets put off, the worse the situation gets. It, the, the general's absolutely right. And folks, I do apologize. Um, I'm going to leave the rest of the general, and I, I just have to return. Gene, thank, 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 thank you very, very much. And thank know, you so much for you your testimony. Me. Thank you. Other questions? Senate Bill 1 theoretically gets passed? Let's, let's put this. There, there's a several sets of numbers that are out there. Eight years, I think the governor's plan, the Senate plan was six. We had some uh, Wall Street investment firms that talked about, you know, really you don't want to go beyond five years. My, po my point that we, or the point that our report makes clear is that the longer that decision gets put off, the more expensive it becomes. As a pure matter of policy, and I'm going to go into my former house days here, you cannot end this on day one. It's, it's simply not practical. The amount of fee or other 
uh, tax increases would be significantly too, too high to justify that immediately. So it's going to have to be phased in over a period of years. But the point we want to stress is the shorter the better. Is there, I mean, you're familiar with the issues here, is there an easy or easier solution for mass transit funding going forward? Well, uh, once you phase uh, this uh, out? We're not trying to be flipped. If there were an easy solution, it would have been discovered years ago. Um, no, there is no easy solution. Something in this package is going to be controversial. At the end of the day, as long as it does it in the most fiscally responsible way while funding the key priorities of roads, bridges, and public transportation, then it's up to policymakers and, and myself included to go out and let the public know why the decision was made. And uh, two other things to add to that. Without doing it costs motorists money. As, as reports have now shown that when you don't fix the roads and bridges, if you have weight restrictions on bridges, and that causes trucks to have longer commute times, that increases the amount of gas they have to buy. You have wear and tear on roads that cost people money out of their pocket for just whether it be new tires or new shocks and suspenders. That's money to a real family as well. Um, so those are issues that, so not acting also costs money. Other questions? Anything? All set? Thanks, everyone.